Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a really cool project called the SBC Case Builder. So let's get started. Now this project is actually suggested in the name. It's SBC Case Builder. Now this isn't just a software itself. It's a project for OpenSCAD. Now, if you don't know what OpenSCAD is, it's basically a programmer's CAD. And if you got a programmer's mind and you wanna do some 3D designing, OpenSCAD is probably your territory. To jump into it, you could do this with Windows or Linux. I don't have anything installed yet, but here's the project. The last time it was updated was about seven days ago. This is the version two, and that's why I'm reviewing it because they actually increased the board amount. They actually have uh, C4, Raspberry Pi Zeros, Raspberry Pi, Kadas, like a ton of boards that you could use. Now you do need to do this stuff, which is git clone and then submodule init and then update. Otherwise the project won't work properly. So you do need to have git installed on your Windows or your Linux. You also need OpenSCAD, like I said before. They have all these designs that you can do. What's cool about this is once you get the case design, you can go in and modify the settings that you need. Maybe you don't need to um, have panels open or whatever. Um, you can actually go in and modify them. Now, what I'm gonna do is open my software center. And in here, you can actually go grab, let me, where's the search button? It's right on the top left. And I'm gonna do open SCAD. Unable to download updates, da, 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 unmet dependencies. I'll worry about that a little bit later. Um, I got a few versions. This one is from Flatpak, or you can use the Deb version. It's up to you. I'm gonna use Deb. Is it, nope. It's the same, all right? Last release version 2021. Wow, that's old. Uh, Flatpak version, last release. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay, I'm just gonna install the Flatpak. It doesn't matter which one you install as long as you have OpenSCAD. While this is installing, I'm also gonna get the project. So I'm gonna go into terminal and let's increase the size of that. Grab this and I'm gonna do change directory over to downloads, git clone, grab that project. And then I'm gonna switch over to that folder and do the same thing with submodules init and submodules update. So CD, SBC, see, that's where it is. And I could do uh, git submodules init and git submodule update. It's gonna grab all the stuff it needs to create whatever it's creating in the back end. And hopefully this is done. Flatpak does take a little bit longer to install everything, which I realized, but it still works very well. And here we go. Once it's done downloading and installing, just hit open. I'm gonna close this out, I don't need that anymore. And here is the default opening of that. I'm gonna minimize everything because I don't need it. And we're gonna go over to open and head over to the download directory, SBC case builder. And then we're gonna open the SBC case builder SCAD. Select that and there's our project. So here we have a default Raspberry Pi, I would say. Yeah, Raspberry Pi 3B case that you could see. Now what you can do is go over here and actually change the board that you want. It has a lot of selections. So in my case, I wanna print a board for my Raspberry Pi 02. So I'm gonna look for Raspberry Pi 02W and they have different designs. Like this is a shell. So you could see that that's how that looks. And I think I'm gonna print this one because this is what I kinda like. But what you can do now is actually change the view a bit. Instead of just a model, you could change it to a platter, which is what you're gonna be using to print the STL. As far as adjustments go, you can also change this. Now here is where you could actually go in detail to select what you want. Instead of just going down this drop down menu on the top right, you could go here and change it to say fit it. So it's gonna look a little bit different here. And you can see the screws go all the way through. Uh, if I wanted to say tray, uh, that's another one. I like this tray as well. This looks pretty good. And it does come with these hex bolts so you could screw them in over here. Um, a few other things. They have round. So it looks like a little round modular thing. So you can yeah, go back and forth with what you want. And if you wanted to do something like a different case, uh, say that I was playing around with the Vim 4 and I was doing shell. I'm gonna hit okay on that. It's gonna remove that project. And here's the Vim 4. 
But mainly, let's pop back into the Raspberry Pi to show you a little bit more stuff that you can do. So Raspberry Pi Zero 2, and I'm gonna do shell. And in here, I'm also gonna do the panel, the platter, sorry. And if you go over here, and if you don't like certain things, you can get rid of them. You don't need all the screws like this. You don't need all this stuff. You could get rid of them. So I'm gonna minimize the view and go over here and I could change certain aspects. All these are settings for it. So if you want the wall thickness to be a little bit thinner, you wanna change out some stuff, you can do that. Now, if you don't want this here, like this little uh, for the GPIOs, the panel, you can actually go into features and accessory and put none and it'll actually wipe that out. If you wanted to have it open vent like that, that works as well. Or if you want it to open so you don't have to punch it out or save material, you could do that as well. So for me, I'm just gonna do a punch out because I could decide later. And as far as the standoff goes, you can change all these positions of the standoffs. Like if you want it to be a little bit higher or lower, uh, is this the bottom of the case or this? Uh, let's see, I'm gonna modify one of these and see which one is what. Okay, so this is the bottom of the case. And I'm gonna keep these as default, so I'm gonna slide them back to zero. But for the top, if you don't want these, you could just like kind of minimize them and get rid of them if you want. And kind of just like hide them. Because all you need really is to screw the bottom. You can leave the top open. It's up to you. But you have the option to do what you need to in here. And if you do need to redesign these, you could actually bring them to another editor. So I'm happy with the details that I have over here. What you need to do is hit F6 it'll generate the mesh. So give this about a couple of minutes, depending on your computer, it could be a couple of seconds. Once it generates with F6, you can hit F7 or go to file export to export the STL. Now, if you're trying to see what's going on, you could just look at the bottom right progress bar. It's not really obvious, but it is there. So I'll show you where it's at, a thousand meaning a hundred percent. Once it's done, it's gonna say this, rendering finish, don't worry about this. There are gonna be some warnings. You could either go to file export STL, which is the same hotkey of F7. And here, you just choose a location. I'm just gonna go into my documents. Actually, I'll just go to the home folder and save this as RPI02, save. It's gonna create the STL for me right here, export it. I could close this out now because I don't need it. If you want to, you could actually head over to a website I use a lot of, which is called Tinkercad. It's just an easier way to modify like models. And while you're in Tinkercad, you can now just I'm gonna import, choose file. It's in the home, rpi0.stl, open, import. And there we have our model. Now, if you wanted to print this in two different colors, you can actually just export a model at a time. But what I wanted to do is if you want to say, add some design to this, and I wanted to add text, right? Does that go through? Yes, it does. Make this a little bit smaller, just like so. Change the text to Nova and move this somewhere. Oops, move this somewhere. And you know what, that's fine. Turn this into whole, merge this together. And now I have a whole and when I print it, it's gonna you know, be transparent or it's gonna go right through and it's gonna say Nova. So you can actually bring this into another editor to uh, modify it and do whatever you want, but I'm not gonna do this. I'm just gonna leave it and then send it over to my printer. And it's a quick printer. It only takes about an hour and a half to print the zero case. All right, and here it is. This is the case itself. Um, it printed out all right. It got the holes where it needs to be. It's lined up, so that's really good. And the top case is a little bit thicker than I want it to be, but it gives room for the GPIOs if I ever decide to install GPIOs on this. But it works. This is exactly what, you know, if you wanted to build a case, simply you could use the software. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys like this project, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys know a project similar to this, uh, again, let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on Discord. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.